these areas have slowly deteriorated through man's impact over the years, so it was a chance to try to put things back using natural processes to improve conditions in the river for freshwater pearl mussels and salmon. We need to completely change the way that we view rivers. At the moment, so many of them are just viewed as ditches to get water away as quickly as possible, which was very, very good for creating productive land. But now we have other equally important priorities, so we have to find ways to accommodate both. And what we've done here is to put the meanders back, so we've re-wiggled the river. The longer the length of the stream, the more space there is for wildlife. All the different parts of an animal's life cycle can be accommodated. You haven't just got somewhere where fish can spawn, but also where young fish can feed and grow up, and where adults can shelter in times of flood, for example. We need to see them as areas that have got a big role to play in terms of climate resilience, and as well as reversing the biodiversity crisis. Where you have rivers such as the Mick, which have become quite shallow and quite uniform in the way that they flow, if you can create eddies, scouring, erosion, by introducing large woody structures such as we've done here, then you completely transform the habitat. And you've also got deep pools where the water is cooler and that creates shaded areas where fish can retreat to when the weather gets hot basically giving it a helping hand by speeding up the process and putting these trees which come from here, they're natural wind blow trees that we put into the river. And by creating better conditions for breeding and their young life as fry and par and then smolts, I think that's the way that we can protect the salmon which is in crisis. We're on the Bronny Burn, which is near Ellen in Aberdeenshire, and we're at a site of a water environment project, which was to remove a weir, and we also did some river restoration works here. The weir, um, as, it, as it had been, was impacting natural river processes. It was backing water up by about 150 metres because of the low slope of the channel. It was also impacting fish passage. But we can't just remove the weir and expect the channel to remain stable, the channel will adjust. So what we had to do was design the sections of channel upstream and downstream to make sure that this river environment here was stable. We were engaged back in summer of 2022, after a successful tender process, to undertake the removal of the weir. And McGowan's were part of a kind of a steadily, but we hope sustainably increasing team. A lot of the work that was done on this job was undertaken by one of our apprentices who'd been through that process and was just sort of coming out of it and was really sort of flying, you know, under his own steam. The river restoration and in particular the increasing numbers of projects we're seeing going forward both helps to create jobs and also sustain them over the course of the year as well. If a landowner has a barrier which is historic so it's no longer in use and it prevents fish from migrating they can speak to us at SEPA. There's a massive ecological benefit of improving natural processes as a result of taking the weirs out and also the opportunity to open up large lengths of river that are inaccessible to migrating fish. Over the last few years we've seen some really significant new funds come online which means that restoration projects are available not just to bodies like ourselves or organisations but individual landowners as well can apply directly to the fund and they can do that on their own or they can get support from various different types of river groups. 